Hello everyone, welcome back. In the backdrop of the Israel-Palestine conflict, I committed to learn and share about other ongoing conflicts elsewhere in the world which do not get as much coverage as Israel-Palestine conflict. I have already made videos on the first Arab Spring, the Yemen crisis and about Yasser Arafat. In this video, let's know about one of the most controversial leaders from North Africa who dreamt of a unified Arab world and an African Union. In the heart of North Africa lies a country with a complex past and an enigmatic leader who left an indelible mark on its history. This is the story of Muammar Gaddafi, a man who ruled Libya with an iron fist over four decades. Muammar Gaddafi, a name that evokes a myriad of emotions from admiration to disdain. Born in a Bedouin tent near Sirte, Libya in 1942, Muammar Gaddafi's early years were marked by the struggle against colonialism and monarchy. Inspired by the pan-Arabism of leaders like Gamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt, Gaddafi came to power in 1969 by overthrowing King Idris in a bloodless coup and proclaiming the Libyan Arab Republic, ushering in an era of revolutionary changes. King Idris's rule was marked by Western dominance. Gaddafi has had this anti-dominance attitude since his childhood. Gaddafi stopped halfway through the college and joined the Royal Military Academy. He joined the army. While in the army, where he was a high-ranking officer, he planned to organize a revolution. On 1st of September 1969, when the king went abroad for treatment, he kept his son-in-law temporarily in charge. At that time, Gaddafi came to power by successfully pulling off a bloodless military coup with the help of his co-soldiers by throwing the king's son-in-law in prison. After he came to power, he deported Italians from Libya. Then he evacuated all the western military bases. He outlawed alcoholic beverages and gambling in accordance with his own strict Islamic principles. In 1970, police and security forces arrested hundreds of Libyans who opposed his leadership or who have the potential to oppose in the future. There were many arrest hangings which has been shown live on the Libyan government news channel. For more than 40 years, Libya has been under Gaddafi's administration or dominance. He did not allow the Western countries to dominate. Gaddafi's rule was characterized by his unique ideology, a blend of Arab nationalism, socialism and Islam, encapsulated in his political philosophy, the Third International Theory, outlined in his Green Book. Gaddafi pursued an ambitious agenda of modernization and social reform. In the parallel world of the Green Book, the system is called as Jamahiriya, a neologism that plays on the Arabic word for a republic, Jumhuriya, implying rule by the masses. The third international system was his answer to the existing systems of capitalism and communism. His biggest contribution to Libya was by increasing Libya's revenue by renegotiating fuel prices and contracts for petroleum exploration. Significant oil reserves has been discovered in Libya in the late 1950s, but the extraction was controlled by foreign petroleum companies, which set the prices to the advantage of their own domestic consumers and benefited from a half share in the revenue. Gaddafi demanded renegotiation of the contracts, threatening to shut off production if the oil companies refused. The gamble paid off and Libya became the first developing country to secure a majority share of the revenues from its own oil production. He nationalized oil resources, providing Libya with newfound wealth and economic independence. Other nations soon followed this precedent and the 1970s Arab petro boom began. With production levels matching the Gulf states and with one of the smallest populations of less than 3 million in Africa, Libya became rich quickly. Libya's standard of living has increased significantly compared to African countries due to the increase in fuel exports. However, despite his lofty ideas of direct democracy and people's power, Gaddafi's regime soon descended into authoritarianism and repression. 
Political dissent was brutally crushed and Gaddafi's grip on power tightened through the revolutionary committees. Political opponents faced persecution or exile. Internationally, Gaddafi's Libya became synonymous with state-sponsored terrorism. The bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland in 1988, which killed 270 people, remains one of the darkest chapters of his regime. This incident further isolated Libya on the global stage. Gaddafi's Libya was not solely defined by violence and repression. His regime invested heavily in infrastructure, education and healthcare, transforming Libya from a desert nation to one with the highest standard of living in Africa. Under his rule, literacy rates soared, healthcare and education were made accessible to all citizens and women's rights were championed. Yet, Gaddafi's mercurial personality and eccentric style captured the world's attention. His extravagant wardrobe, flamboyant speeches and grandiose projects such as the Great Man-Made River made him a figure of both fascination and ridicule. Gaddafi reportedly employed a cadre of female bodyguards because he believed that an Arab gunman would have difficulty firing at women. However, it has also inferred that Gaddafi's female bodyguards were, in reality, just an aspect of the dictator's well-known eccentric showmanship and his fondness of surrounding himself with young women. While talking about the inspiration for his character in the film The Dictator, actor Sasha Baron Cohen said one of the inspirations came from Muammar Gaddafi. Gaddafi's vision extended beyond Libya's borders. He championed pan-Africanism, funding numerous projects across the continent and advocating for a United States of Africa. In February 2009, Gaddafi was elected chairman of the African Union. Later that year, he gave his first speech before the United Nations General Assembly. The lengthy critical speech in which he threw a copy of the UN Charter generated a significant measure of controversy within the international community. He said that he was going to sell oil only to India, China and Russia and that he was going to implement it as soon as possible. He claimed people who have survived without oil for 5,000 years can live without it again for a few years in order to legitimate the rights. Not only that, he said all oil-producing Arab countries should use the same currency and he decided that the currency should be gold. He names it as gold dinar, which means if you buy oil, they don't need US dollars, they need only gold in return. This, if implemented, would lead to a plummeting US dollar rate. However, Gaddafi's ambitions also led to his downfall. In 2011, amidst the Arab Spring upspringings, Libya descended into chaos as a way of protest fueled by discontent with Gaddafi's authoritarian rule and economic mismanagement. These protests against Gaddafi's rule escalated into a full-scale civil war. In February 2011, after anti-government demonstrations forced Presidents Ben Ali and Hosni Mubarak from power in the neighboring countries of Tunisia and Egypt, anti-Gaddafi demonstrations broke out in the Libyan city of Benghazi. With NATO intervention, Gaddafi's regime collapsed. The revolution culminated in Gaddafi's capture and death in the hands of rebel forces in October 2011, marking the end of his 42-year reign. His demise left Libya in chaos, torn apart by competing factions vying for power. Today, Libya remains deeply divided, struggling to rebuild amidst ongoing conflict and instability. Since the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi's regime in 2011, Libya has been plagued by violence and fragmentation, with various factions vying for power and control. The current state of affairs in Libya would call for a separate video on that subject. Gaddafi's legacy is a complex tapestry of achievements and atrocities, leaving behind a nation grappling with its past while striving for a better future. For some, he is a revolutionary hero who championed the rights of the oppressed. For others, he is a ruthless dictator responsible for untold suffering and bloodshed. In the end, the story of Muammar Gaddafi is a cautionary tale, a reminder of the complexities of power, the pitfalls of authoritarianism, and the enduring struggle for freedom and justice. Thank you for watching. I'll come back with my next video. Till then, bye bye.